What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage and the 3.8 turbo Cayman engine build. In this video, our trials and tribulations continue. Stay tuned. All right, boys and girls, gather around, let Uncle Mike tell you a little story here. If you remember from our last video, whoever installed the sleeves in this engine did it improperly and because of the way this Porsche flat six engine has to be assembled, you have to run tools through the cylinders to insert wrist pins into pistons and rods and then sir clips. Anyway, my goal for this video was to show you guys that process. In order to get to that point, I had to figure out what to do with the sleeves to get the clearance I needed in order for the tools to work. So I ripped apart the engine. I took bank two off. I went ahead and taped up all the oil galleys and put paper towels in all the crevices that I could find so that I didn't just spit metal shavings everywhere. And I went in with a Dremel and I clearanced those access holes. It actually wasn't that bad. I was really dreading the job. I was nervous about it. Um, but I took a time lapse for you and I'll throw that in right here. With that being done, it was time to throw it back together and attempt to install the pistons. I decided I was gonna do the first two off camera to just keep my mind on it, get a feel for it, before I showed you guys exactly what had to happen. I started with piston number six, install went perfectly. It was really just a piece of cake. It was no big deal. I didn't understand why, you know, people stressed out about it as much as they do. So I moved on to piston number five. That's when things started going south. I brought some visual aids to help in my storytelling here. I need you guys to get a full understanding of how this works in order to understand what happened. So on this bank, bank two, you start by installing a piston, bare piston with just rings in the cylinder. You push it down, bang, 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 bang. And then you have to align the holes for the wrist pin with the hole in the connecting rod. You do that with this tool. This tool wouldn't fit last time, that's what I fixed. I got the piston installed in position, piston and rod all you know centered as it should. The next thing you do is take this tool and your wrist pin, you put your wrist pin on the end of it, and then you insert it through the block and through those cylinders, and then you push it through the piston and into the rod. You have a circlip on the back side, so that's what stops the wrist pin from going too far. Now hang in there, I'm almost done explaining this. Then you have to take your circlip, and you guys know how much I love these things, and you insert it into this tube. So it slides in there, and this slides in here, you push this back through that hole, this butts up against the piston where the wrist pin goes, right there, like that. And then you jam that through, which pushes the circlip into the slot in the piston, and you're good to go. And that's what happened on cylinder six. Everything went great. So, cylinder five, put the piston down, line everything up, get the wrist pin installed, and then I go to install the circlip. When I do, the circlip does not fully engage into the proper seat. On the piston, there are two grooves right here. You can see the outside one. Yeah, you can kind of see the inside one here as well. So the outside groove is where that tool sits. And then there's a shoulder and you have to push the wrist pin over that. This one actually has the wrist pin in. There's what it looks like bare. So that tool pushes the wrist pin over and into this groove. Once you install the wrist pin and the circlip and you think you're done, you have to go in with an endoscope, boroscope, whatever you want to call it, to confirm that that circlip is sitting in the proper groove and is completely seated. This is what I saw when I checked to make sure that the circlip was fully installed. It did not make it past the first groove. Probably asking yourself, what does that mean? What do you have to do? How do you fix that? That's the questions I had as well. And uh, well, come to find out, you have to rip bank two back off and start over. So for the second time, I took this case half off. The pistons obviously stay in place on the connecting rods. So then you have to get those off, 
clean up all the gasket surfaces, etc., etc., reassemble the whole thing, and start over. That's what I did tonight. I got number six piston, pushed down, paid extra special careful attention to making sure that the tool was fully seated in there before ramming it home and pushing that circlip in, and it didn't make it. It didn't make it to the second groove. So, for the third time, I get to tear this puppy back apart. I'm not even mad about it or frustrated anymore. It's a good lesson. Uh, I'm gaining valuable experience on how to properly put these engines together, and I'm glad that I'm able to share those issues with you guys. It does suck, though, because I really wanted this video to be, you know, a completed short block like we've wanted for the past couple videos but i always share with you guys exactly what happens uh, i didn't put out a video last week and i thought about just doing an instagram and facebook post to tell you guys what was going on but i said screw it let's just throw a video together show you guys exactly what's happening what's taking so long i'm gonna call it a night tonight but uh yeah that's that's where we're at i'm gonna tear it back apart I'm going to go back and watch the video from Jake Raby and the Knowledge Group again to make sure I'm not missing any tips or tricks on using that tool. What I think has happened after missing again this time and then looking down through those access holes, what I think has happened was the piston wasn't 100% right in the middle of that access hole. It was skewed just a touch to the top. So I don't think that that tool fully seated into that first groove. And if your tool doesn't fully seat there, when you slam the circlip in, then the circlip doesn't have a smooth path and it just hits that shoulder and stops. So before I rip it apart, I'm gonna rotate the engine back and forth and I'm gonna see if in fact I can get it perfectly in that hole to confirm that my tool will fit as it should. If not, it may be something with, you know, using aftermarket components and the bore and stroke being different from what the original engine was designed for. And, you know, maybe there's further clearancing I need to do. I don't know. If you're watching this video live, then uh, you are likely quarantined like I am due to the ongoing pandemic. Please stay safe. I hope you and your family are healthy. I'm really looking forward to getting all of this behind us getting our cars back out there, seeing you guys at the track, but let's uh, make sure we take care of ourselves and our family so that we can do that. See you next time.